I love playing Terraria, and I play it a lot. One of my favorite things about Terraria are its amazing weapons. Their sprites, their animations, beautiful. And as a digital artist, I could capitalize on that. The question is, what would these sprites look like if they were more realistic? High quality. This is the second part of this series, Art Amateur Tries to Illustrate Terraria Weapons. Yes, there is a prequel. A horrible one to be honest. This is going to be a six part series, split into three segments. Right now, we are in the pre hard mode period. The first part was me illustrating the Star Fury, Knight's Edge, and Slime Staff. Like last time, I will also be illustrating three weapons. And this time, I'll give myself a challenge. The Star Cannon, Water Bolt, and Imp Staff. Are you sure? Well, well, why? You normally draw landscapes, and you've never drawn anything like this before. Yeah? So what? Wouldn't it be overwhelming? Of course it will be! That's why it took me more than a month, and scrapped some failed attempts. Was it worth it? Yes. Ah, the Star Cannon. It's a ranged weapon that shoots stars. What a surprise. Now, I was researching some significant aspects about this weapon, and through research, or just some general Terraria knowledge, the recipe of this weapon uses a mini shark, fallen stars, and meteorite bars. Based on this, this is going to be a space gun. So, I started to identify points of interest in the sprite that are unnecessary in the actual illustration. Now, how I illustrate these weapons is by replicating the sprite as accurately as possible. This is a more 3D version. Now it's time for coloring, making sure that it's accurate as the sprite. With the coloring finish, I started to add some detail and lighting. Now, I imagined this weapon to be highly metallic, so I tried to add that metallic feel into the cannon. It wasn't that hard, I just used some brushes that work really well as metallic textures. I was also adding some scratches and stains to make the metal look more realistic. Now, one of the main references that I use for this cannon, other than the sprite, is this illustration of some star guns on some game called Poker VR. This became my main reference for making this illustration, mainly because of the beautiful reflections and textures on the gun, which I attempted to replicate. As you can see, the lighting is on the opposite side of the side that we are facing. That's why the edges have highlights. Next, the star. Looking at the recipe of the weapon, I concluded that these fallen stars in the recipe are used as a display on the cannon. And since these are fallen stars, they should glow, like in Terraria. Of course, the recording of me illustrating the star? Well... Shoot! Okay, that's annoying, but... Forgetfulness. Ah, what a pity. <coughs> anyway, this is the fallen star. Glowy and not at all interesting. I didn't really put much thought into it, and it more or less has a texture that is copied from the rest of the illustration. I know, it's not like I will replace it, right? Right? Anyway, with most of the illustration complete, there are some parts that still need a bit more refinement. Starting off with the whole of the cannon. Some marks and two rings. That's literally it. Next, I want to add more detail to the back of the cannon. This part especially. It looks too plain, and a bit of random detail can go a long way. One of those details are a bunch of lights, showing how much stars are left before the cannon is out. Next, I was going to add a stylistic jut out below these two orange stripes. As you can see on the sprite, you can see that these two bottom parts extend outwards. So, I attempted to add that, and after a bit of modifications, oh, never mind. Guess let's deal with the handle first. Now, the problem with the handle is that it doesn't fit well with the star cannon, and also, it doesn't make much sense. As you can see on the sprite, it looks like an arch. That doesn't really work, does it? I tried coming up with designs for this handle to make sense, 
but eh. I feel like the star cannon is way too heavy for only one hand to carry, even if it's made of something like, I don't know, titanium or steel, or it's mostly hollow. I mean, what's meteorite normally made of? Like, iron, steel. Solution? Let's make this cannon two handed. I added a comfortable place for the hands to grasp on. As you can see, the handles look like pipes. I ran out of creativity for this, so I felt like this was the best option. Please don't judge me, I really tried my best with this artwork. I also made another handle connected by the first one, cutting out this section to give space for it. Forget accuracy, this is now my own style. Then I finished the gel out over here, remade the back of the cannon, and apparently did not do anything for an hour. I wonder why. Maybe because the illustration is finished? It looks like it. I mean, the cannon is complete, but we could illustrate it shooting some stars. Alright then. Now, the stars that I illustrated as projectiles are a lot more vibrant than the fallen star on the cannon. With the surrounding aura, particles, and a comet's tail, it puts this fallen star to shame. To be honest, looking at it, it looks disappointing. So, wait, you're not meant to see this bit? I also illustrated the star projectile inside the cannon. This shows that the cannon is capable of rapid fire, like in game. And with that, that is the artwork complete. Now, if you were thinking that this is my first attempt, it's not. I made two other versions of this, and they sucked. Like, really sucked. Especially the first one. I don't know how to illustrate guns. This is my first ever experience of illustrating guns. But the third attempt, although not being perfect, looks amazing. It has all of the elements that the sprite has, plus adding some details to make it more interesting. What I like about this weapon the most are these stars. They look so vibrant, just as I wanted them to be. All in all, this illustration is good enough. Yeah, it's pretty good, not gonna lie. On the topic of things that I haven't drawn before, a spell book. Or a grimoire? Well, actually, that's a lie. I did draw one, but that was part of a one hour challenge, with the most minimal effort done. And I have some high expectations for this artwork. So, this will be a challenge. This spell book is pretty cool. It shoots out water bolts, hence the name, I know surprising that have insane piercing abilities. These must be some overpowered streams of water. From looking at the sprite, it looks really simple. The centerpiece looks like a teardrop with a yellow frame surrounding it. Now, that's not really interesting. Even though I'm sure this would be easy just illustrating what's given, I will make it more complicated for myself by adding some unnecessary details. Starting off with the base, Then the teardrop on the center. Then I added some corner protectors on the corners of the book. These aren't in the sprite, but I added it cause why not? These corner protectors are the reason why the book is still in great shape after so many years. In a dusty old dungeon with skeletons. No one took it out. Or maybe the skeletons read those books because they were bored. Oh wait, they have no eye. After that, I was dealing with the framing and adding some large raised bands on the hinge of the book. I was using a reference that has these big bands, and I used it as inspiration. Please don't hurt me. One close to the head cap, and the other one close to the tail. Yes, we are going to be learning about the parts of a book. Get over it. With the outlines complete, these look quite messy, not gonna lie. It's time for some coloring. I made sure to make these colors as accurate as the sprite. Blood red, ocean blue, pale yellow, and from that, I had a thought. Is this frame actual gold? In my opinion, yes. And what about these corner protectors? Also gold. What about these bands? It's gold, hold on. If it's a metal, then it can't really bend, can it? 
Gold paint! It is coated in gold. Very accurate. Now, it's time for detail. I wanted the book cover to look pretty rough, and by using these two brushes, it helps create that rough looking texture. Those that can be felt on thick books. Now for the teardrop, it was going to be a challenge. I wanted it to look like a glowing gemstone, with beautiful reflections and a polished look. Like the gemstone on this reference. I tried, but with my limited skill set, meaning I do not know how to make art, I could only do this. The teardrop does look like a reflection of the underwater sea though. Looks really mesmerizing. After finishing the teardrop, I moved on to adding some reflections on the frame and quarters. These reflections? I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. But hey, the end result actually looks really good. Hold on, I forgot to extend these quarter protectors. These are some thick protectors, man. I also added some swirly designs to add more interest on the frame. And it looks like we're done. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought. A bit too easy. You see that I saved this spot over here, right? That's because I am not satisfied yet. What is inside the book? Well, that's what we're going to find out now. This is what I am imagining the inside of this book looks like. It's basically a water 101, plus some spells to turn that water into a deadly weapon. As you can see, I have etched some interesting things into these pages. Here's the formula to make enchanted water. This is one out of many different forms of enchanted water that this book showcases, and this one can be weaponized. This is just a drawing of the earth. These are the specific plants that this enchanted water can be used, maybe to increase their growth potential or create magic? Not sure. There are also some scribbles of text to explain what these things are. Of course, you can't read nor understand them because they are literally random scribbles. And no, these aren't the runes on the enchanted table in Minecraft. But now, it's time for coloring and detail. Hey, it actually doesn't look too bad. I also realized that the thickness of this open book doesn't match up with the actual closed book. Because if it was closed, it would look a lot more thicker. So, to counteract that, I added some big gaps. And to finish this artwork, it's time for the projectile. This water bolt will be levitating on top of the book. I created a flowing aura around it, with some particles to represent the energy that is coming out of it. I also added these bright blue streaks on the book. They're a cool addition, as it looks like the book is energized when casting a spell. And to finish off the artwork, let's add some glow. You know, to make this bolt look a lot more flashy. To be honest, I like the closed book better. The open one looks a lot messier than I expected. And I was too lazy to search up what inside the grimoire to make these textual aids more accurate. The projectile salvaged this though. It looks so cool. Something that you could surf on. Still though, this could have been a lot better. But hey, it's a great attempt nonetheless. A book fit for a dungeon. And no, this isn't my first attempt. This is my second attempt. The first one, yeah, you can see why I made another one. The Imp Staff is a summoner weapon that summons Imps. It is made of hellstone bars, which are made out of ores from the depths of the underworld. Since it's a weapon made from the underworld, there is going to be a lot of warm colors and fire in this one. Now, for the artwork, I will be illustrating the staff and the Imp. One slight issue. I don't know how to draw bodies. I don't know anatomy. Could this get any worse? Well, this is going to be fun when illustrating the M. To start off, I drew the outline of the M staff and the M's. I was going to illustrate two M's encircling the staff, and I say was, because that idea was scrapped. For now, 
I replicated the sprite and then added some modifications to not make it look too boring and plain. And for the imp, with the help of a few references, I slowly turned this thing what is this lol? Into a more humanoid form. Looks good. As for these flying imps, no. I decided to have one imp that should hopefully look similar to the sprite version. I'm sorry for any professional digital artists here that see this disappointment. I started off by using geometric shapes to mark each segment of the body. Then I started to draw the form of the body. Unlike an actual human, the limbs of the imp are going to be shorter. Probably just an excuse for making some limb measurement mistakes. Then I started adding the ears. Then the wings. Now about the imp summon. The wings on the sprite of the imp look like angel wings and I feel like it doesn't really suit it. So I changed it to some bony wings. I know you want an illustration that is consistent with the sprite but come on. Angel wings on an imp from the underworld? No. Keep in mind that I was using references for this one because I have no clue what I am doing. After drawing the imp, I started coloring. Initially, I wanted to replicate the colors on the sprite, but as you can see, it didn't really work out. I couldn't translate the sprite colors into the actual illustration really well, and as you can see, it looks like a mess. And after almost an hour of trying, I gave up. Instead, I wanted this weapon to glow. Glow bright orange, like from the depths of the underworld. I just gave up on the colors of the sprite and went with my own style. I am sure people would like that. Most of the color choices are going to be vibrant and warm. Surprisingly, it worked really well. And after successfully detailing most of the staff, what I have left is the imp on the staff. Now, I played around a little bit with the design, attempting to at least keep some consistency with the sprite, which I know I can. So instead of attempting to even try and make this stuff look like the original sprite, I just thought, Infernal Flame. Yep, looks good. Another thing that I didn't like was the outline on the imp. It looked too weird with the more vibrant and luminescent base. So, I gave it more of a red tint. Plus, I also added these curves within the staff, and after a bit more detailing, I finished the staff. It looks... alright. Now it's time for the imp. Oh no. Uh, alright! I think I will not do this and just do other things and said, come here! Oh, you don't understand how much struggle I had with this. Again, I am not good at illustrating characters. And in this case, I don't know how to shade, add lighting, and detail. So as you can see from this montage, this is going to be a cycle of me trying to figure out how to color and detail this imp. The first attempt wasn't really that good. It looked like a mess, and I wasn't really happy with it. Plus, I put all things into one layer, which made it an absolute annoyance. Look, it's an eyesore. Just, just accept it, alright? Please. So I tried again. This time I made sure to be deliberate with my details. I also made sure to put the wings into another layer. Starting with the body, I added the shadows then the highlights. I wanted the imp stuff to illuminate the imp so that's why the lighting is that way. After the body, I dealt with the wings. The outlines were too messy and so I cleaned them and then added some details. Seriously, what's up with me leaving things recording for almost an hour while not doing anything? Let's do some more wing details. And after finishing the wings, it's time to color those horns and get the face sorted. Yep, this is A-okay. To be honest, this looks a lot better and a lot worse than I was expecting. I like it though. And to finish this illustration off, let's make this imp hold a fireball. The summon in-game actually shoots fireballs to attack enemies. I also added these fire particles surrounding the imp because that's what the imp summon emits. That's the illustration complete.
Hmm. I like it. But there's one thing that I need to mention. Now, the only thing that you and I know that should be criticized is the M staff. It doesn't follow the sprite's colors. And I tried. Well, not really. But I must say, the rest of the illustration is amazing, especially the end. My expectations were low, but saying this, I am proud of the result, even though it's not perfect. This sure is a perfect weapon for the underworld. My illustrations blew my expectations away. I mean, it took some attempts, but it shows that I'm actually competent at making art. The Star Cannon is my favorite because of its form, the metallic feel, plus the vibrancy of the stars. It's really eye-catching to be honest. To be able to turn simple sprites into amazing illustrations shows how much creative potential lies within them. It's beautiful. Since you've seen these, I'm sure you want more. So again, 1000 likes for a sequel. It's hard mode time. Or you can go and watch the prequel if you haven't already. Just to warn you, there's going to be a lot of loud noises and me potentially being rude. Sorry. And also, your subscriptions, likes, and comments on this video are truly appreciated. This video took so long to make. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and go and do what you're meant to be doing.